Hi folks, it's a Mantis video. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a video on a mantis and um, obviously this is the mantis man channel so we should be doing more videos on these so what i've done first video i'm going to get one of my old girls out who's probably at the end of her life now she's about 10 months old and probably hasn't got much longer and as you can see she's up here on my hat she loves to climb and she seems to have sat still there so i thought i'll leave her on my hat she's going to do no harm yeah so this is a scientific name i'm going to try it's dedoplates labata deadleaf mantis now these, uh, they are a bit harder to keep than your basic mantises. So as a beginner mantis, I wouldn't especially recommend one of these as a um, care needs are a little bit more in my opinion. They like to be kept a bit of a higher temperature. I keep them at about 27 degrees Celsius. You can keep them 25 to 30 and I have known people keeping them lower. The temperature can drop down at night a bit lower. I wouldn't recommend going below 21 personally myself, even though I have read up that they can go to 18, which sometimes I wouldn't do. Um, I have known people keep them at room temperature. The humidities are best to be kept quite high if you're using a bioactive setup. That said, I haven't used any bioactive setup for my mantises as of yet. It's something I'm still delving into. I've always used orchid bark and then some stuff from Climber. They spend a lot of time on the top any case, even though you build these fantastic looking tanks, they spend a lot of time on the top. They get a lot of moisture from the food and I've just been spraying here about once to twice a week in the hotter days and then once a week. Uh, on the normal you know, like winter months and stuff like that just so they can get the droplets like I said they get a lot of moisture from the food I uh, keep my mantises in 16 ounce deli cups when the younger the ones I showed you in my last videos I'll show you some in a moment and then I move up to 32 ounces until they're ready to go into the big enclosure the reason I do that is you don't want a little nymph in such a massive enclosure where they can't find its food um, it's a big issue. I know like people will say well in the wild they hunt for it but some mantises tend to stay still a lot longer and don't move around and they wait for their prey and that being said in the wild there'd be a lot more prey moving around in closer to them whereas if you just added one item and it, they might not find it, there's a good chance that they're going to die with not getting the right nourishment from the food. I wouldn't use crickets. Now this is a big debate on any side. Me personally I haven't used them because they're very fast. Um, I don't like the smell of them and the noise just absolutely does my head in. Um, any feeders that you use like crickets or locusts if you are using them, do not leave them in any longer. They can eat your mantis so if your mantis is shedding they will eat it. Um, I have seen this happen with one of mine where luckily I've got a two in time but it was eating the actual skin it was coming out of. Um, so I've never had a cricket myself after that and when I've added locusts which I do use when they hold it I tend to see if they're interested in them. If they're not interested in them or they, they're not moving the mantises I tend to take them straight out. Your best bet is for using blue bottles and green bottles um, personally. I know a lot of people have issues with putting these in but there is putting systems and I will be doing another video on this. I did do one a long time ago for another vendor and I feel like it's something I should do on my channel to show people now because it's a very simple way of feeding them. And they're great, mantises are great, they great, make great pets for kids, they don't move around so fast, majority of them, um, only when they're nymphs, once they're older they tend to calm down a bit. Um, I've never been personally bit by one badly, I've had a few what have accidentally bit me when I've been feeding them something on my hands, um, and it, it, it hurts a little bit, but all in all I've had hundreds and hundreds of mantises, and they come out fine. You can coax them out, they let you know when they're not interested through threat displays, uh, but most of the time they're bluffy. Uh, they're great little pets to keep, I would advise anybody to keep them. What I'm going to do, I'm going to try to get her off my hat in a bit and put another lens on them just so you some great photos of them. And these should be part of your invertebrate collection, they're very interesting, great little hunters, they've all got different characters. I absolutely fell in love with them and got addicted to them, and I would advise anybody to have a mantis.
Hi folks, so we're back after showing you them little clips of the Deadleaf Mantis. Now we these are the little pots I was on about, and the 16 ounce pots, and they've got 32 ounce pots. These have got my ghost mantis in. I'll do a video on these. Great start mantis. They're not very expensive as well. Really easy. Pretty interesting as well. But what we'll do is we'll do a little setup on these. How to keep them dead simple. And um, we'll do the top three starter mantises in my opinion that I like. Think are great to keep. Easy. And we'll go from there. So if you've liked the video, don't forget to subscribe, share, and notify yourself for the next videos that are coming. Thanks for watching. <laughs>